for the venue owners though because they don't have to deal with all these bands loading in and you know the big sound guy and uh, you know all that kind of drama I guess. It takes a lot to put on a live show you know. Club owners I think look at it and say we can make a hell of a lot more money if we give this guy a hundred bucks to sit there with his laptop and play some music. A lot, of, a lot of the bars, especially in this area, have closed down. You know, like the Brickyard's been completely redone. Yeah. They don't do live shows. The Columbia is some fancy whiskey bar. Yeah. yeah. The Cobalt. Burp, the Burp, you know, country the Cobalt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the pubs I used to go to, uh, Pub 340 or something, if, it, if that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, I think that one got shut down or something. I remember renting the Vogue Theater is $6,000 for one show. It's more expensive than having a DJ just fucking ripping off musicians, you know, slinging their tracks or whatever. It takes a lot, you know, and I'm grateful to this venue owner for allowing us to do that, you know. So. If we lost any of those venues, I think the metal scene would pretty much be devastated, like to the point of bands just not even bothering pretty much and they might just move. Away. All the good ones would probably just leave and just be like, well, we got to play to somebody, like... Yeah, I don't like hearing about that stuff. It's like, where are they going to play? There's like two venues now. <laughs> For instance, playing at a place like the Roxy, if you were to do a showcase there, you'd be on at 8 o'clock. And they're all about their house band. The house band is on at 10 o'clock on, and that's it. And who the hell they goes out for 8? The rickshaw was somewhere around $2,000. Something like that, but you, we have to put the money up front to get that show, and then you have to sell tickets to, you know, m most of the time you either break even or, or you lose or, or, or something like that, and then, lose money. then you basically make your money on merch. Yeah. And they, yeah. they, they don't they don't give anybody a chance to maybe take that headlining spot at at midnight or one a.m. when the bars are packed and actually give these bands exposure because people are going to show up to the bar no matter what. It's yeah. the rock scene. There's pretty much nothing outside of Vancouver. Like, Vancouver's got all of them, whatever there is. Everything else is just a random pub or something that doesn't have a proper sound system or lighting or anything. You know what I mean? It would be nice to see a place like that use that influence to promote local music rather than just have a house band, you know, basically doing live karaoke. It's a wave, I guess. Maybe eventually it's going to rise it up and uh, we have uh, Vancouver again, like a uh, good venue with good places to play. But I don't know. Right now it's electronic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs>